Hi everyone, I am Salva. So today we will try to understand the Thielsen regression algorithm very clearly, the mathematics behind it and how it works very very clearly. Now we know the problem with linear regression. Linear regression say you have two variables, x variable and y variable and these are the actual data points. If you try to draw a line of best fit here, we, if you try to draw a line of best fit, it might come something like this. Now the problem is in the presence of outlay, suppose you introduce a new data point that is having is quite different from the rest of the data points, the line of best fit can get tilted towards the other outlay data point. So linear regression is extremely sensitive to outlays. We don't want this behavior. So what both Henry Thiel in the year 1950 and Pranab Sen in the year 1968, they came up in independently with this idea of Thiel Sen regression. So how does Thiel Sen regression work? Let's start with the data set. The first step is you have the data set data set D made up of X, X and Y, let's draw the data set. So you have this data set, there can be multiple X's and Y's, right? So this is your data set. You start with this, we start with this data set. From this data set, we take all possible pairs of records. Let's suppose this contains N rows, one, two, so on, so forth till N rows. You take all possible combinations. So one and two, one and three, one and four, each of this is a pair, right? So Let's construct this so you have 1 comma 2 is a pair, 1 comma 3 is a pair, 1 comma 4 is a pair, so on and so forth till 1 comma n. Likewise, 2 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 2 comma 3, so on and so forth till 2 comma n, so on and so forth till n comma so on, n comma n. So a lot of different pairs exist. Can you estimate how many possible, total possible number of pairs can come? Given n rows, the total number of possible combinations is n c 2. Suppose n equals to 10 n equals to 10. That would give us 10 into 9 divided by 2 into 1 equals to 45 pairs of combinations. So as the number of records increase, the number of pairs that is possible can increase drastically. That can make Thielsen regressor a little bit more computationally intensive approach. Nevertheless, this is very much possible and quick to compute with modern computers. Now let's start by taking one such pair. Say you have the first record and the second record, let's say. All right, we call these data points as P1 and P2. Now, since we are taking just one feature, this is easy to understand with just one feature. So we are taking just one X and just one Y. All right, and we have these data points X1, Y1 and X2, Y2. Now, what we are interested in is we are going to estimate the line of best fit or rather the straight line that connects these two points in this case. That is, we want to estimate the alpha and the beta coefficients of this line of best fit that goes between P1 and P2. So in this specific case where you have just one X and one Y, you can compute the slope M, the slope M here, tan theta of this, this angle, right? Tan theta of this is nothing but Y2 minus Y1, Y2 minus Y1, which is, which is, which is this distance. This distance is Y2 minus Y1 divided by this distance is X2 minus X1, X2 minus X1. So that will give you the value of slope variable. So we do this for all possible data points that exist. So we do this for 1 comma 2, P1 and P2. We do this for P2, P1 and P3. Likewise, we do this computation. We compute M for all possible data points. In this case, if, if number of records equal to 10, there are 45 values of slopes in the output. The Thielsen estimate of this M, of the slope, Thielsen estimate of slope, is nothing but the median, the median, median of all these numbers, all these slopes is the Thielsen slope. Now, once the slope is computed, we need to estimate the value of the intercept. As many slopes there exist, there are n slopes existing or 45 slopes for 10 records, right? So as many slopes that existed, as many intercepts also needs to be computed. So this will not be the number of rows, it should be all possible combinations of the data points. So 45 when there are 10 records. So to compute the intercept, we simply substitute the values of yi and xi in this equation to get the value of the intercept because y equals to mx plus c or in this case we write the intercept as b, so mx plus b. So b becomes y minus mx. Isn't it? So that's what we are substituting in this equation and the median of all those intercepts is the estimate, Thielsen estimate of the intercept. So to simply put in a nutshell, we take the data set, 
take all the possible pairs of records in the data set we compute the values of the m and the b or the or to put it simply all the coefficients all the coefficients from the line of of the line of best fit we computed and compute the median median of all the coefficients the median will be the thiel thiel sen estimate thiel sen estimate of the alpha and the beta values the only drawback with this approach is as the number of data points increase the number of possible combinations or pairs of records increases drastically that makes it computationally intensive